yes, I'm driving. And yes, I'm videoing myself. And yes, it's not, probably not a good idea, but I'm not looking at the camera. I'm just holding it. So that's your disclaimer from the very beginning. But this can't wait. I've got to say it while it's on my mind. The last several days or weeks, God has put several people in my life who crossed my path and um, that really needed to know the Lord. And I had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to share the, the love, the saving power, the blood of Jesus Christ with these people. And I did it, but I did it um, really without pray for, prayerfully considering what I was doing. And um, I just did it because I knew that's what I was supposed to do. But, uh, you know, after about the third or fourth time, I said, God, why are you all of a sudden putting all these people in, my, in front of me? You know, there's got to be a reason for this. And uh, then I actually started to talk to God about it, you know, instead of just trying to do it all myself. Because apparently I just I really like to be able to do it all. And uh, I think at one point or another, we all get to that point where we forget who's God that we're not God. And um, time and time again, I I would share with people about uh, this person, you know, came across my path and uh, they've really needed help in their situation. I explained their situation and they said, you know, well, that situation's beyond repair or, you know, oh, that person really wasn't that bad off or, or whatever it was, but, you know, Oh, well, you got to be careful because, you know, that could be dangerous or it could be this or it could be that or all of these different reasons as to why are you questioning me, qu questioning me as to why in the world are you stopping to help these people? Why, why would you do that? Why, why would you stop and risk your safety or risk whatever you think you're risking, you know, to go and, and tell these people about Jesus Christ when their situation's beyond help anyways. And a lot of you probably who are watching this video think that that doesn't apply to you. You're not that person. But I'll tell you that there are very, very few people that I've come across lately who I've spoken to about some of these testimonies and, and things who've actually been encouraging, like, wow, you know, that really inspired me. And I put part of the blame on myself because at the time I wasn't sharing it with the intention of saying, look at what God can do. Look at what God is doing. I wasn't saying that. I wasn't reaching that person with that testimony about how God's blood can help in any situation. Who am I? I can't, I can't help their situation. Sure, I can give them a few dollars or, you know, I could pray with them or whatever it may be. And their situation may be far, far, far beyond help in this world. They're not far beyond help from the Lord. He died on the cross. And his blood was shed just for us. So that we might know Jesus and we might have eternal life. I watched a video earlier and in this video someone very wise said, imagine you're in a world, you're in the world that we're in now and you instantly gain fame. You have no enemies. Everybody bows down to you. Everything works out perfectly. You have everything that you could ever want. You enjoy every, every moment of everything that you have on this earth. And you're on top of the world. Things couldn't get better for you on this world. But then you die. So what did you do? You gained the world and lost your soul. We forget how temporary this life is. And that's why this video couldn't wait. I'm not wearing makeup, which is absolutely terrifying for me because I don't like people to see me without makeup. I'm also like severely overweight right now <laughs> and I don't want people to see that. But you know, these are 
selfish reasons to hold back from telling people the truth about Jesus Christ. And I pray that this video touches some people and helps them to realize, just as I realized through this experience, that maybe it's time for a reality check. Maybe it's time for us to, um, to seriously consider, you know, what, what is, what is, where's our standing in life? Where do we stand with the Lord? Where do we stand in eternity? Do you have any doubt at all as to where you're going to be when this life is over? And if your answer is, yeah, you know what? I have a little bit of doubt. Sure, sure, yeah. You go to church, you do all the right things. You read about scripture, you pray. But you have maybe that lingering doubt in your mind. Oh, maybe I'm not quite in the relationship with Christ like I'm supposed to be. Maybe I'm not putting him first before everything else, before myself. Because these are all questions that I was having. You know, am I really, truly putting God first? Is he truly the first thing before anything else in my life? I was talking to someone earlier this week and I said, you know, I really wish God would come on. I wish, I, God, I, God, I wish he would just come on. Come on back, Jesus. And this person said, no, I don't want that. You know, it's kind of selfish of me to say that, but I don't want that. I want to keep on, I want to be able to see my kids grow up and I want to be able to see my family and, and whatnot. And I thought to myself, God, how lost are we? We as a people, because I know that this person wasn't the only person that thinks this way. There's so many of us that think this way, that we think that this world matters so much more than eternity with Jesus Christ, than the eternal glory of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has offered us when he died on the cross. And it breaks my heart. Absolutely breaks my heart. And, um, you know, I have, I have been a hypocrite. And I know that. And so when, when people are watching this video, I don't want you to think, oh, well, Sarah's, you know, Sarah's definitely one to talk. You know, she, she, should, she shouldn't have to be saying anything about this. Like, she's holier than thou. I promise you, I do not deserve one bit of the mercy that God has provided me with. I know that. I am unworthy. But we all are. And you know, lately, God has been putting enemies back in my life so that I can, I can remember how to forgive. So I can remember, you know what, forgiveness wasn't just for me. It wasn't just for the people who kind of messed up a little bit or or whatever, it's for everybody, even the ones that do me wrong, the ones that hurt me, the ones that I feel like shouldn't even be forgiven. God's blood was poured out for them too. We think that we have problems here in America. I guarantee you, a lot of y'all don't know what a problem is not a real problem. Some of you, you know, you've lost children or gone through really, really traumatic experiences and, and I'm not downplaying those types of situations and I'm not downplaying the loss of loved ones. I'm not downplaying any of that. But a lot of times in our day-to-day -day lives in our American culture, we forget what it's like to live in a in a, a world with real problems, day in and day out, real, real problems that you can't do anything about. And um, a lot of times we need a problem. We go out looking for one because we don't have enough problems in our lives. And we may not realize that that's what we're doing, but that's what we're doing. We're looking for problems. That's why we have so much drama in small little towns, you know, we need a problem. We need one. 
I just want to share this video. I know later on I'm gonna be feeling embarrassed or or whatever, but um, it's worth it because this video isn't about me. It's about Jesus Christ. And I, I just pray for each and every one of us, including myself. I pray that um, God just starts moving in our lives across this nation and across this world. And I do pray for the return of Jesus Christ very soon. This world is going to hell in a handbasket fast. We're editing genes. We're trying to create God. We're trying to create the God gene, the God cells, the God molecules. We're trying to alter, alter evolution of the humans. Y'all, this is happening. It's not in the news, but it's happening. These people behind the scenes, while we're worried about 50 people throwing throwing fists at each other over a racial dispute, we're, we're sitting here soaking it up. There's more media people videotaping this stuff, this nonsense, because that's what it is. It's nonsense. There's more people videotaping this stuff than actually doing it. Yet in the meantime, all powers that be are soaking up all of our money. They're making us completely dependent on them. They are running our lives. I gotta pull over, y'all, because I'm getting a little emotional. We're letting the, the politicians in this country decide how we want to how we think, what's right and wrong. We're not looking to scripture and to Jesus Christ and to the word of God to decide what's wrong and what's right. We've lost all our morals. They've got people in Switzerland trying to trying to use this God particle or whatever to, to recreate the Big Bang and to uh, figure out, you know, how we came to be because they can't figure out how is it that we 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 were created on this earth they just can't they can't fathom that it's something that that uh there's not scientific explanation behind it y'all the, the end is near and we need to stop playing around like this 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 world is all there is i i don't know how to get through to anyone any more clearly and it terrifies me making this video. It absolutely terrifies me. It's not comfortable. It's not meant to be comfortable. Telling people the truth is never going to be comfortable. And I pray that if you are a Christian and you know God and you have the Holy Spirit living within you, that you do not hold back any longer. That you share the word of God and the good news of Jesus Christ from this day forward with every person that you can, that you have an opportunity to share it with. Sure, you're going to mess up, but don't let that hold you back. You just ask God for forgiveness over and over and over again until you get to where you need to be with Him in your relationship. I'm going to let y'all go because I want to be safe on the roads. But I just, I just feel like this was necessary. And I guess if you're gonna, if you're gonna think something about me, oh well, oh well. I'm not gonna be ashamed anymore. Because that's what I was doing. I was being ashamed of my Lord, my God, my Savior. I'm no longer ashamed. And you shouldn't be either.